Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. This is a video many of you have been asking for me to do. Is hey, why don't you port those Promax Project X 215cc heads? Well, I did. They're all done, so I'm going to share that with you today. That's what this is about. So these are, if you haven't watched the previous video, I don't know how to link into that stuff in there. I might try to put it in the descriptions, but I sure don't know how to add it to the screen that you're watching. But anyway, I'll probably put that in the description. You can watch the very first video of this head as it came from Pro Max. And now you get to see the finished version. So here we go. I'm gonna flip it around, change my uh, lighting so you could see better. But I'll go ahead and tell you from this view since we're already here. I kept, it's about a 1206. Really what I use is AFR has a gasket that they use for like the um, larger heads, like their 220 head. And that's what I use. So this opening is the same. But in all fairness, it was really, really close as cast. So if that part's not really that much of a change, the pushrod pinch, now this is, there'll be a part of a video that you can see what I'm talking about on this, is probably the more tricky one, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's flip it around and show you the other view. Okay, here, starting with the chamber. Now, what's been changed? This is. These ones come with 8 millimeter um, stems, so I think they don't even offer that now. It's 11 30 seconds, probably because of the cost. What did I change? First off, it's the valve job. The valve job is now cut out to a 210 intake valve, and still one 600 exhaust valve. From the factory, I believe they're 208. So um, it's a 45 degree valve job though, and that's quite a bit different. On most of the stuff I port, because it's for racing, it's a 50 degree valve job. And what a 50 degree does versus a 45 is, the 50 degrees do wear out a little quicker, although I've had some that have lasted a very long time, even in circle track stuff, um, than the 45. But the 45 is supposed to last longer um, but typically it also flows better at the lower lifts. The 50 degree flows better at the higher lifts. Hence why most of the time I use a 50 degree valve job because it's definitely better in the, um, pretty much from 500 on. And most guys are running a solid roller cam have at least a 600 lift, so it helps. This customer specifically requested though, a 45 degree valve job. I believe he's running about a 680 lift camshaft though. So anyway, it's a 45 degree valve job. It's a 210 intake valve, one 600 exhaust valve. I will say, what valves did I do use? I used actually AFR's valves. These are the AFR valves. These are what you get standard in your AFR 220. It's the exact valve. Um, their valve back cut, I didn't change it at all. Same with their exhaust valve. It's theirs, it's a tulip valve. I just used theirs. I didn't use any of Promax's stuff that they have. So I don't even know what they offer. So anyway, Biggest thing is bigger valve job. And then you can see from the port work what's been done as well. So obviously I've increased the bowl area um, and rope through where the bolt hole is and it got sleeved as you can tell. Let me just move my flashlight so you can see. I make it so blinding. Yep, there you go. You can see the head bolt sleeve. You can see how much it's ported. I left this vein in. For those that don't know, that vein's a really, really kind of a tricky deal. It, the way I mean by that is it really bumps up the airflow numbers in a certain spot and hurts them in others. It's very, very weird. Um, anyway, most of the veins typically come straight or that way. When they're coming off this way, almost the opposite direction, it's, it makes things act weird. It's the best way I could put it. I did, of course, open up the bowl. That's from here across to make it bigger. And the reason why is because you have to slow the air to make the turn over the short side. The short side did get laid back, as you could tell, and it also got widened quite a bit. Um, as you can also tell by looking at it, you, what you're seeing there is the apex, which when I flip around the other view, you could see that. So definitely got bigger, more, more pronounced, nice radiuses and everything really good there. But, um, anyway, chamber got a little bit of work because if you watch the previous video, there was a step that got left on the exhaust that got removed. Um, the intake one had one kind of from the, um, oh, from the valve job I had done and you can kind of see some of it, the remnants of it there. This looks worse than what it is. It actually blends right in. If you were to dig it out more, you end up making it wider. And then it's actually, it just looks better on a flow bench and less ceiling area. Anyway, let me flip it around and I can show you the other view from the push rod pinch side. Cause that one actually is where the weird part begins. Here's the view of the short side now from this side, which its height isn't near as tall as what it was before. It's definitely more laid back because it's very straight when you from the factory, which is how AFRs are. If you're wondering, I ported this almost exactly like I port the AFR 210 and 220 head, almost exactly, with the exception of the pushrod pinch, which I will get to in a minute. 
But um, anyway, so the short side's laid back more. It's definitely lower. But here's the other thing too. This is where the pinch problem comes in. And this is a, a notorious thing. And you're about to see. So let me show you what I'm doing because I took a little video while I was grinding so you could see what I'm talking about with the problem with the push rod pinch in case you guys decide to try this. Okay, I thought I'd show you this while I'm doing this video about me porting this Pro Max 215 about the after results and everything. I did spot something because you can go back and you can see the video to begin with of me flowing the, three, the Pro Max 215 at Project X 215 head stock. And I always flowed this port. But it wasn't really till I started grinding that I saw some things. And this typically happens. Because I should have been like, hey, that, I wonder how they fixed this. Or how they dealt with this. And let me explain. This head right here, this Pro Max Project X215, is really just a copy of the AFR, right? Um, but I have pulled enough of the AFRs to know that this being the AFR, this hole right here is where the push rod goes. And if I lift it up, and I look in here. These, by the way, are damaged heads. I got one. But anyway, if the distance between that hole and this slot right here, so from here to breaking through, is 30 thousandths. That's it. 30 thousandths. Um, and of course, it's more, it's less here, and then it tapers out and get more. But I wondered, that's a lot. That's that's not much at all. In other words, I, whenever I'm porting AFR heads, I never touch this part of the port. And this being the dummy head I got, um, just to see if it would break through and you pretty much can't if you even slightly hit them You're gonna bubble them and then if you get after it try to make it wider. You're gonna break through so Knowing that this was the copy of that head and I float only this one if you look at it It's got a little hump there. You see right there where the push rod is. Okay, and I didn't really think much about it But look at this side. This one's so much worse now being this is an as cast head and I'm because I've ported this now, both are but I've already finished one head, they're both the same. What happens is cast heads have core shift, it's going to happen. So, in this case, this pair that was put in here, maybe as the mold was poured, it moved this way because I know that because there's um, more material on this side of the port and um, it's moved over. In other words, when I'm grinding, I could tell that there's more of a void here, like it's been shifted over here than here so like there's more material for me to grind here less for me that I have to grind here and it's the opposite way on this one you know, there's uh, less I have to grind here and more I have to grind here the same thing happened here which makes from a porting standpoint this gets pretty tricky because this one I know right away what it's going to be don't touch on this one um, if you go trying to grind that out and I'm thinking I don't know if they moved their slot over and I did do some measurements with my sonic checker but it's really hard to do in a radius there still isn't a lot of room the point I'm trying to make is the core shift I'm thinking if you remove this and I haven't really got after it because we be pain to fix on the one that's already done I just pretty much rounded this so it kind of blends in and gave it about what it should be because I measured this area this length width and made this one the same and that's it I didn't try taking any more out because if you blister it, it's going to be a pain to fix because there's no welding torch I know that can get down in there. So you'd have to machine this whole notch out here just to get the welding where it should be. The point I'm trying to make is if you choose to grind this, I'd be careful right there. So not that they did a bad job casting. This one obviously is pretty good, but just from core shift, it got moved over. Um, I, I should have thought more about that. I guess when they were copying, they got it as best they could, but you can't, you can't win 30 thousandths. That's nothing for a movement in the core. So yeah, pretty tough. Anyway, I thought I'd tell you that in case you chose to do some grinding yourself. Here's me halfway into it, I guess. In case you're wondering what the method I do when I pour, I'll do bowl, which is across here, throat, this side, flip it over and do the, that side, then come back to do this, the roof, so there's a process, but I always do this part first, then this part, then the other view. Last thing is short side. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. So as you could tell, there's some issues there that just makes me more nervous. Maybe I could get more area by making it wider, but I'm so afraid to break through here because it would be a lot of work 
to machine that out just to weld. So I did drop this floor to get more area here at the pinch. In case you're wondering what area did you end up with, 2.45. Now this is going on a 406 and he's trying to make power at 6,500. I think it'll be fine. Um, the only other way to really do it is like what I did with my own AF bar stuff is I raise it all the way to 1207, but it's kind of thin through here. So I'm not really gonna attempt that. So this is pretty much it. I think he's gonna be fine. I mean, I'm, I'm about 99% sure he's gonna be fine. It's gonna be an issue at all. But I thought I'd show you that. So you're kind of limited. You have to really bring it down. If you don't drop this floor here, you'll be like in the 2.3 area, which is great for street stuff. They're just trying to rip it up, but not as good for racing stuff when you're trying to spin some RPMs. So not to say this can't work on larger cubic inch engines. You're just gonna reduce the RPM that it would work in. But let me show you the exhaust and we'll get to the flow number of the thing you really want to see. Here's the exhaust view. It looks, the exits are actually the same. I didn't enlarge those, no need. So instead what I did is I make the bowl bigger on one side, not the side that they do, because I copied an AFR allegedly. So that makes this side bigger. I don't need it there. But I did move it over this way and then lower the short side down as well, which did end up helping the exhaust flow. But from the outside view, they look exactly the same. But anyway, let's get to the thing you really want to see, the flow numbers. One more quick note about these Promax heads, these Project X, that I totally forgot to mention is this. You probably can't even see it, but you see that right there? That is a hole. And you're like, oh my God, you poured it into water. Actually, no. And I did wonder how they did this too, because AFR, their distance between this bolt hole, I want allegedly copied the AFR, um, the distance between this bolt hole and here is very little. So I wondered how they did that, and that's the other thing. Because a core shift, I didn't do that, because as you know, this is not the side to grind on. Um, there's a hole, and where that hole is, is through the back of this. So it's, um, just as a reference for you guys that are doing that, and looking at this, there's always gonna, already going to be one. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. All it does is it means your header bolt's going to cover that up. But if you're looking at it, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, it's not in the water. It's just going to leak gas to the header bolt, which that should be sealed anyway. Anyway, uh, just a little, little thing for you. Here are the flow numbers. So this column right here, cylinder one, is actually what they were stock, completely stock. And you can watch that video and see these. This is what it is now. So the numbers I like most, I told you before, are four, uh, six, and then peak. But... We'll just go through them. At four, before it was 233, now it's 249, which is really good. I probably could have got a little bit more of that if I had done, if I had taken more of the face away from the, more of the 45 and then made the back cut larger. This is probably gonna go right over some of your heads. But what you can do is you can take this in the valve facer and you can take more of the 45. It will reduce your margin. So it makes the 45 wider, what I'm trying to say. And then when you do the back cut, you'll have more material on the back cut. In other words, you make the 45 bigger so you can take more of it off to make the back cut larger. That will pump up those numbers there. And they hurt a little bit here, but definitely gains more there. Could have done that. I don't think I really need to, to be honest with you. That's pretty good. Um, you look at 500, 273 to 279. It doesn't look like a big jump there, but at 600, it sure does. By the way, this is in the Sains bench. I'll show you the Superflow in a second because this is the one time where they're close and different at the same time. They're closer and the Superflow actually reads a little less. Anyway, at 600, it went from 296 to 313. It's pretty good. I'll be quite honest with you. If I put my 50-degree valve job on, this would have probably been a 282, and this would probably be right around 316. Now, here's what's weird. As I was flowing and I noticed that it was still, it was climbing real good, and it didn't do it before. At 660, I captured it because the numbers were like in a 330 range. As you can see here, it went 333 at 660 lift. That's actually where it's recorded its peak lift. A peak flow. This is really due to that vein. The vein really makes the air do weird stuff and at certain points and that's it. So really makes it number really strong in that area, 650, 660 range, but then it always drops right after. And you can actually hear it on the flow bench. Um, someday I'll record that as so you can hear it. At seven, it goes 323, eight, 328, 326, 325. So really, really good. It Had it had the 50 degree valve job, it would have probably been 330 right in this range anyway. Maybe like no one runs a one inch. I've talked about this before. It tells you the port stability. Now, the exhaust, it also picked up. So this is the same valve flowed with, which is weird. Uh, exact same valve. 
And you can tell here I'm a little bit worse at one, which I'm actually kind of happy with. I prefer to flow worse at one because that's where version kind of happens. A little bit worse at two, exact same almost at three. And at four, it's one CFM up. And then it starts climbing after that from five on. 17, five, I mean, it's gaining quite a bit. Peaks at 233, which is about mm, 11 CFM more than stock. So really good. By the way, this without exhaust pipe. So that's that one's flow numbers. Let me go ahead and show you on the Superflow flow bench. By the way, this is flowing on a 4155 board because that's what he's running this on. Here's the Superflow numbers. And like I said, it's this one's probably got it the closest of all of some of the heads I've done. This reason why I have two flow benches because usually the Superflow reads higher, but sometimes it reads really close to the same. This being it. 248 at 4, that's pretty close to what it was on the other one. 310 at 6, though, that is down from the other one by about mm, 3 CFM. But then at 7, they're about the same. I think it was 322 on the other one. But then you look at the peak, they're about 3 CFM higher. The exhaust actually was really close, too, from what it was, 234. However, you're like, why didn't you capture the one at 660? Maybe it would have been higher. I tried. The problem with the Superflow bench is um, it takes forever to spool up, so you got to capture it real quick, and the Sains can't can so in other words it would read 333 and then it'd read it for like maybe five seconds and then it start dropping because that super flow bench takes too long to spool up so trying to get it at its peak thing was it was a, it was almost impossible i pretty much gave up after the third try so yeah i probably still would read 330 um if i had done like and what i mean by that is you have to it seems weird you have to open the valve at a certain rate. If you open it real fast, it'll actually get to 333. But if you open it slow, it won't. It'll only do like 322 at 660. So, in other words, this seems weird. You see that 323? Guess what it was at 650? 322. So, they were almost steady. And you're like, why didn't you capture it? Again, I was trying to get that 330 number. So, it was like 320. I just couldn't get to the 330 to see if it would match. That vein does weird stuff, like I said. and It has to react real quick. I know that seems really confusing to you and it doesn't do it on most heads. It's just with the one with the vein. So and sometimes you can capture it. Just this one for whatever reason, you can't. So in case you're wondering at 650, it was 322. So which isn't, isn't bad. That's pretty good. I mean, after all, it's still 322 at 700. So it's still kind of, in other words, it looks like if you were to graph it all the way out, I would climb the whole way. Um, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, I still think the Sains reads more accurate. It usually does. It's definitely a lower one. So anyway, it's a good head. If you really wanted 330 CFM, 50 degree valve job, but I had it easy on everything. It'd have hit it the, there, which is really close anyway. Um, I would have had it, but nice head. So for those who are wondering, yeah, you could port these and make it flow 330. So by the way, how's this compared to uh, the AFR stuff? If I port an AFR, it does almost the same um, with the exception of doing some different stuff. So it's about the same. The AFRs are a tick better. Um, for sure when I port those, but um, not by a ton. The biggest thing, like I said, is that push rod pinch. I know exactly what the area is going to be on the AFR. It's kind of harder with this one just because of the core shift stuff. But anyway, um, how does it compare to even the, in the AFR 220 now? They only go like 309, and that's at peak, like at one inch. So they're, they're okay. They're, they're good, but this is definitely beating it. And that would be a great... I wish the Dyna Mule was together. God, I wish it was together. Because that'd be a good one, just out of the box AFR 220 versus this one. I already know which one would win, but it'd be cool to see. Anyway, you guys remember, I'm Nostra Man. You guys take care.